McDonald's. Oh my god. We, Ron, you're saying one of the police motorcycle cops. I love it. it. I mean, can we just can we just speak about how great Roger? Um, that's America. I love that's that man. Now, I love that man. I love that man. I love that McDonald's. You know how we do victory celebrations? Beer? Your man Simpson thought one of these three would be your choice. You mentioned a nickname, but that's malt liquor, so I don't know if you. Oh, hurricane! That is me. Which I don't one want do that one, but that's my name. Do you want to dance or not? This is the other child. We'll go over there. Okay. You know, the way does that work? Yeah. You yeah. pick what you want. You see. This against the grain, man. I'm gonna do that. Doing a little koozie. I mean, I am the hurricane. You know, right. Brian knows, but I made him put that out there. You know, brought a hurricane out here. So I'm gonna from RP. I'm gonna be your guy and hold that for you, so you can pull from it while we're okay. and then. He wants more fries because he won the Indy 500, and you get more fries. Mm. Joseph Newgarden, aka. Hurricane. Oh, you have the hurricane. to you, my brother. Cheers, man. Oh, I'm gonna go out and commit crimes after drinking this. this <laughs> is it is okay? Amazing. It's like malt liquor. This is as American as it's gonna it gets. You up. Um, hey, I don't want to get too sentimental, but when you cross the finish line, I thought of two people and two things in particular. Jeremy Shaw, Team USA, John Doonan, Mazda Road to Indy. And within five seconds of you crossing the finish line, I had 97 texts from John Doonan. Yeah. He was just a crying puddle of joy. Can you speak to what you know this represents for every young driver who's currently coming up the ladder mm. to be standing here? Because what you achieved on that ladder has you wearing this wreath. Well, there's no doubt. Those are two great candidates um, to, to talk about. You know, Jeremy Shaw has an amazing program, the Team USA Scholarship, that I, I was lucky enough to be a part of and was, was a, a big deal for my career. And John Doonan has, you know, been masterful with the road to Indy uh, all those years, giving amazing scholarship opportunities. That's the great thing about IndyCar. You know, there, this is a true racing series where if you have the talent, the ones that are really, really good that maybe don't have the funding, they can make their way to IndyCar. You know, you think about Kyle Kirkwood, someone like him, it just doesn't happen in other racing championships. So um, there's no doubt that it was very instrumental for me to get the opportunities that I've had. Obviously, it's it's a lot more than those two individuals, but they they were two instrumental people. You know, Jeremy has been tremendous for for young drivers, and, and John as well. And there's no doubt without their support that you know maybe my story would look differently. Um, so it's a long list, but but they're a big part of it. I'm going to ask you a question, and while I do that, get in Thank there, you. son. Appreciate you, that. You deserve all of this. I mentioned in my end of day wrap up video that you had become the Indy 500's Tony Kanaan, right? Tony was here 10, 11 times, came so close, but every year left frustrated. One, biggest reaction we'd ever seen, explosion of love from fans for him. It's not a torch you ever want to carry, but that kind of became you. You became that Tony Kanaan of every year, so close, so close. Tell me about that ability now to exhale because you're now an Indy 500 winner, but also that same kind of explosion of love from the fans seeing America win the Indy 500. Uh, today was amazing for so many reasons that you know we could talk about for a long time. Uh, just the the energy of the Indianapolis 500 crowd is unlike anywhere else. You know th this is the most difficult motor race in the world to win, and and I. I can wholeheartedly say that. It's such a tricky race to get right. And if you're lucky enough to win it with the team, it is, it is so special. And now I know how special that is. And I wanted to, I wanted to experience that energy from the crowd. I, I, I know what it looks like, and I couldn't imagine what it would feel like if you won the race. So I was always hoping and dreaming for that. You know, but I, I think about the hidden pain for many people. You know, I, for me, I don't, I don't know that I was ever an outwardly favorite driver. You know, Tony had been so close a lot of times, led so many laps. I wasn't in that situation necessarily. I haven't been here and led a ton of laps and things go wrong. But I have been here kind of maybe under the radar and things have gone wrong. So I think about that hidden pain that I've had, uh, that I've, my team has had, you know, that we knew we could win the race or we knew we could be contenders and we just, something happened and it didn't go right or, or we didn't get the job done. But there's a lot of people that have that, that are here, you know, that 
I know tonight there's going to be a lot of hidden pain of people that said they could have won this race and they could have, you know, had a different day. And I think that's the tougher part, you know, is is not necessarily not being recognized for it because that's not what you're looking for. But you just you pour your heart and soul into this event and it breaks your heart when you don't win the race. It just it breaks it more than anywhere else. And you, the only thing that matters here is winning. It really is. It's, it's a little cheesy and it sounds funny, but it's so true for the Indy 500. There's one winner. There's one happy team. And then there's everybody with a broken heart. And, you know, the, the more years you do that, the more difficult it becomes. Santino Ferrucci just had his best ever Indy 500 finish of third and was in tears, and those weren't tears of joy. So everything you're speaking of, so close, but so defeated. Let's close on just a couple of things here. So you may or may not know your amazing left front tire changer, <laughs> Caitlin Brown, made history Incredible. as the first woman tire changer over the wall pit crew member, to my knowledge, at the Indy 500. So, and she's been an ass kicker long before today, but she's huge, a badass, by the way. Huge achievement there. Luke Mason, I told him, like, all right, so you do this in your sixth ever race as a race engineer. How about my boy Luke? How about that? I knew we would come good. I have absolute faith in my team. You know, I've been, I, I've been outwardly about it, and I, I, it's just hard for me to not be honest when I feel really confident in something. Like I've been in this group, I just can't not say it. You know, it's not. It's hard for me to hold back and say, oh, I, you know, maybe maybe don't tell everybody how confident you feel. But I felt so confident in, in our group and what they were capable of. Caitlin is an absolute badass it's cool she's a girl yeah but it doesn't matter she's Remember a girl she's just a badass she she earned her spa, spot on our team regardless so i'm a huge caitlin fan luke mason the same way but yeah, I, I could name everybody off. all your crew we have an amazing team um you know led by chad uh, chad gordon who's done just a tremendous job New crew chief he's a first, first year he's crew chief in an indy car <laughs> game he's been on an indy car before but he's really the man in charge now and um he's you're got a, a star make a new gun he has an amazing support cast we, we have such an unbelievable group and I, I'll tell you this it, I would be remiss to say it, it is more than the two car I, I would I would be blessed and happy to step into any one of our team Penske cars I know how good all of our crews are it doesn't matter which one I would drive for they're all tremendous and they all make up this win and all the crew came down as well celebrating like this this wasn't your win this was everybody's win. team win speaks to the culture there it is and look this is vindicating for all of us I we have had a front row seat as the drivers of, of how much work they've put into this event you have no idea you know, we've, we've tried to come here with no ego. We know we weren't good enough. We know we didn't qualify well. We know we've been slow. And people just have had so many questions for us. We're Team Penske. They, ex they expect excellence, and we know that. And we've put in hours and hours of work. And I'm so proud of this whole group. And, and for them, it's vindicating that we were able to get this. This is a big team win for everybody. And it shows that we can be here and win this race. And look, we'll work on our qualifying speed again. We'll come back. You know what? I'd say don't. P70 to P1. I knew I had a good okay. race car. I knew it. I was like, look, the race car is great. It doesn't matter where we start, but we'll start a little higher next year, hopefully. <laughs> Let's close on this. And I was a puddle of, of tears, embarrassing tears at the end of my end of day video saying Robin Miller was your unofficial PR agent, manager. You never asked him to do any of this. And look, I mean, I was rooting for you and whatnot as well, but Miller, for years when you were with Sarah Fisher, uh, CEFH Racing, see, I forget all the different acronyms, but <laughs> Robin Miller, no longer with us, but tell me about that guy calling Sindrick constantly saying, why aren't you hiring this guy? Well, he's not seasoned enough. I don't know. It took a little while, but we don't have our, our beloved freaking Miller here. But that guy was always rooting for you and made damn sure Sindrick and Penske knew this was the guy of the future. I still, I'm still not convinced Tim liked me, you know, <laughs> and even nowadays. I, 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 I think he hates me at all times. So I'm around, okay. I'm around Tim every now and then. I'm like, man, I don't know if he dislikes me or not. You know, uh, he's a tough, he's a tough guy to crack, but he's, you know, Tim's amazing to have on the car and you're absolutely right. Uh, Robin was a big champion for myself. Add him to the list. Uh, there's a, this is a long list of people that have been very supportive of me and, and have helped make my career what it is and him hammering 
RP and, and Tim constantly to, to give me a chance, it, you know, was probably a difference maker. There's no doubt. You know, it's impossible to say, but I think if you ask Roger and Tim, they'd probably tell you that that was a difference maker. Just to get him to shut up, we hired you. Yeah, like, okay, we'll give him a chance, and then hopefully he fails and we'll fire him. But, um, no, he was, you know, it would be amazing to see Robin here on a day like today, and his passion was almost unrivaled for the Indy 500, as you know. Um, special guy, and, you know, like I said, it's tough to not have him here today. Village behind this kid, not only an Indy Lights champion, working with small teams, raising them up, becoming a winner at carpenter racing, becoming a force in IndyCar with him, showing grit, getting hurt, fighting back, getting into the car, getting an opportunity with Roger, winning a championship in his first year, adding to it in 2019, Indy 500 winner now. You're everything that's right about IndyCar, son. I'm so happy for you. Thank you, Marshall.